content and the code. And it's doing this through to the previous slide, starting from local things and providing a participatory philosophy in achieving all the services. Whatever is being developed by others, we take advantage of, we build upon, we don't rebuild, we don't spend again money to do the same things, just grabbing what is already there to come up with something that is value-added. And in doing that, we end up having an effort that is really multifaceted at many levels. And it's, a, 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 it's not just multi, but it's also inter. Sometimes you bring all this together, sometimes you have to interact with others. So, multi or inter, national, lingual, disciplinary, cultural, meaning uh, scientific culture, organizational, and so on. In order to, for open air to achieve what it needs, it has to operate in multi facets, in multiple facets. And by bringing together the consortium that we have so far, we've managed to do this. Um, with respect to the human infrastructure, from where we started, Open Air broadens its engagement with the research community. It has national open access uh, desks in every single member, uh, member, nation member of the European Commission and beyond. But not only that, it interacts with many other uh, entities that have an interest in this. It encourages researchers to deposit their results, publications and all, in institutional or thematic repositories and putting access and, and putting them in open access uh, uh, places. All the videos that you saw, all people were saying, oh we want open access, we want to find things as a result. I'm not sure if whoever was taking the, the interview from them asked them, but do you deposit your stuff in open access repositories? This is always a challenge, and our network of open access desks is facing this challenge with, with many tools. And the speaker that comes right after me will say about lots a lot more uh, in, in, in detail, maybe. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, we collaborate with many scientific organizations and initiatives in order to do this. Our effort is not done in a vacuum. As I said, it's participatory. Whatever others have done that helps our purpose, we interact, we collaborate with them, and we bring the results. This is our structure, 27 uh, uh, member states, plus a few other nations uh, within Europe, but also going even, even beyond. Uh, collaboration with many, many, many other initiatives, organizations that have to support us. I won't go down through the list. Europe is for current research information systems. It's a, it's a big uh, issue of collaboration with them. ORCID for coming up with uh, standard identifiers for researchers and so on. This is not a pilot anymore. It's a true service. And uh, yes, 24 hours is not enough, but that's what it takes to offer in a multidisciplinary level, at the European at least level, the services that, that, uh, that we have to build. Moving away from human infrastructure, let's go to the content infrastructure. Open Air broadens its scope. It started with a traditional uh, research publication concept, and it moves away and deals with all kinds of research outcomes. Not the, the content itself, but the data, the metadata that it needs in order to combine and link and analyze and, and, and cluster and come up with higher level information and useful knowledge uh, uh, for, for research. Currently we have 6.5 million, you'll see two or three numbers in our various talks, it depends on when we got the number, but it's above 6 million, 6.2, 6.3, 65. <coughs> in any case, soon it will be 7, so this number, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And we interact with funding agencies, not just the Commission, but also uh, across Europe. And although every institution and every scientific discipline wants to offer uh, a repository for the constituents, there are some that don't have a natural place to put the research results, the publications of the data, and so on. We offer that as well. We call it for orphans. They're not orphans, they're homeless. Not the people, but the research results. So 
So we have mm -hmm. a way to store what doesn't have a natural place to, to go to. Uh, I mentioned this new concept of the research communication. What, what is this? Well, um, if you go and look at the research question, typically this results in a publication, and that's what we've been talking about. But this is not produced in a vacuum. It has lots of things within the publication, the data includes, the license it has, and with it other publications it cites, or doesn't cite, but alludes to, and so on. But of course we have the research data usually produced the work that produced a particular experiment, and so on. And of course, usually this is paid by someone. Who paid? How much they paid? Under what, con under what program? All this, and a lot of other things that are not in this picture, constitute the new form of publication. Some of it can be considered as a publication on its own, just a data set. The research data set can be considered a publication. Data sets, uh, text, and so on, with everything else, is necessary for someone to understand the kind of research that was done based on the requirements of modern day science. We need to. No, we don't need that. We need red button. Okay. All this to capture the concept in the way more and more scientists consider what their scientific result is about. And uh, our current services and our services under development move in this direction. Now, um, some glimpses of things already happening. This is a biology uh, paper. And here in the red, which I'm sure you can read in the back, uh, it says uh, the data set that I produce has been deposited in GenBank. The accession number is this. Okay. Already data and text go together, and that's and that's a link. And if you go and you look at how uh, Chapman uh, uh, shows this, it has uh, a PDF okay, uh, that takes the data from Chapman. It has a particular way of interacting and showing the publication. And here are the accession numbers of, of, of the elements in Chapman. If we look at different uh, uh, social sciences, similar, similar way the publication and various data related links, external database links that uh, they uh, need to show next to the textual publication. What is the right concept of this new research publication? We are working with stakeholders, with different disciplines, with DATS, with EBI. Uh, and so on, coming from this to understand the commonalities in this new research publication and the new synthesis of every discipline in order to be able to support it. And we have some services in this direction and more are to come. This is the future of research results and we are there to take advantage of what is produced and, and bring it to the research. Third infrastructure technology. Open air broadens its scholarly communication services. Uh, Open air is a platform. You can take it and install it at home and do it with your publications, home being your institution, your lab, your country, your continent, at whatever level you want uh, to achieve this. Uh, and it, it does not provide, for the most part, first level services. It aggregates, it integrates, and then offers things on top. So many of the things that I mentioned, and uh, let's look at the picture. This is a fancy picture of, of the presentation. Underneath we have the data that others produce. Uh, the 6.5 million publications in different kinds of repositories, institutional, thematic, open access, closed access, uh, uh, halfway open, whatever. Three systems and funding, uh, funding databases. We are probably the only European project that has access to European Commission database. Okay, and, and that's a big achievement. Uh, uh, lots of interactions with colleagues of the European Commission to achieve this. And, and now we're going to national funding agencies, and we are trying to we are we 
data away from that as well. The main mission is, as I said, lots of databases there, and then data repositories. Not to have to deal with the data, the data is taken care of by others, but to grab your metadata to link in your data, data site, and so on. And this exists uh, without us, and then comes the open air hub. Uh, for lack of a better term, offering registries of all these things, the CERN system that offers a home to the homeless, um, huge machinery to analyze all this, to aggregate, to clean, to interact, to link, to come up with trends, and so on. Uh, get rid of duplicates, realize who, uh, which of them, 10,000 Yanis Yanitises, let's say, uh, is the one who wrote this thing, and so on. And all that, we offer a bunch of services, but we know there are many others who want to offer services on our data. So we offer application programmatic interfaces to third parties to come up with their own services as well. And then we have our own. Uh, help desk, deposition, it's easy to depose this stuff to us, come, don't be afraid. Lots of visualization and management with this new form of publication. Okay, search and browse. Curation and collaboration. Uh, linking content, coming up with statistics, all these services. This is the added value that we offer on top of data that others have. A lot of uh, effort is going on there, but bringing it all together is the catalyzation that um, uh, OpenAir brings to the research life cycle. And of course,